for that. I'm, I'm really excited about tonight's lecture. I got to hear uh, uh, Christian uh, speak at the Perennial Plant Association. And I'll tell you, as somebody who does a lot of speaking, one of the toughest things to deal with when you're giving a talk are uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> They're difficult when you're doing it in your, your, uh, your first language. Uh, when you're dealing with it in your second language and giving a talk and people are fiddling around with computers and trying to get things going, it's really difficult. And I got to tell you, Christian is a consummate professional. He kept going like, nobody's, uh, no problem at all. You, you barely know there was, there was an issue there. I was standing in the back with somebody else who gives a lot of talks and we were both very, very impressed with, with that. And the, the content was fantastic as well. Uh, Christian is a German nurseryman who started his own nursery, Sarastro Stauden, in Upper Austria 20 years ago. Uh, he's known all over Europe and, and the U.S. Uh, folks on uh, rare perennials uh, for, for plant enthusiasts all over. Um, he's traveled through many countries to learn and observe the local conditions of, of the perennials. That's, that's a real key is to get out and see plants growing in the wild and see how they actually grow. Helps you much to be a much better gardener and nurseryman. Um, you've got lots of plant introductions, some that you may know. Uh, Sedum angelina, which is one of the best, most reliable perennials around. Such an awesome plant. Um, right now, that little gold succulent is turning bright fire engine orange out in the garden. I've got it in my house. Uh, it's a great plant. Um, and Campanula, <coughs> Campanula cerastro, which is another um, phenomenal, uh, phenomenal plant. He loves to write books, articles, give talks, um, garden magazines, give lectures all through uh, Europe and Russia and the U.S. So please help me welcome Christian Kress. Now you want you know all over me. I don't need to speak anything. <laughs> uh, thank you for talking about so uh, for so nice people, and um, uh, I will show you um, my profession. And uh, I grew up in a nice little town in the southern part of Germany, in um, on the Swiss close to the Swiss border. It's a, um, a little town from the Middle Age, uh, Laufenburg. It's the German part, and then the other part is the Swiss part. And it was, in former times, it was one city and belongs to Austria. So, uh, there I grew up, and I learned my profession in a little nursery in, the, in this city, Laufenburg. And it is a little, little nursery and uh, um, I learned uh, a pot for pot plants to clamen and after this, after these two years, I thought to clamen and uh, euphorbia, uh, poinsettia and so on and primulas, it's boring for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want, I want to, 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 to learn more to, and then one day, I drove with, with my uh, Mofa through the Markgräflerland and then I saw Staudengärtnerei Gräfin von Zeppelin. I know you heard about this nursery. <laughs> it's a very popular nursery. In, in Germany it's one of the po most popular nurseries. Um, Gräfin von the Countess of Zeppelin. Yes. And I go in and saw this marvelous, great assortment, and I thought, this is it. I want to learn this, and perennials. And then after this, I go to first to the military, and then to the, uh, in Switzerland. And there I worked uh, about uh, three and a half years in the Swiss perennial nursery. <coughs> Nowadays, it's very, it's very, very um, uh, um, old-fashioned. Uh, this is very old-fashioned. Um, excuse me about the um, bad uh, quality, but this is a scant uh, dia. It's a, a slice, uh, a slicer. And uh, later we see very good. Uh, I hope very better quality. These are the frames from the Alpines. It was a big, the biggest nursery in Switzerland. And uh, um, 
we had the hard work. The Swiss are very hard workers and they work nine and a half hours per day. And uh, yes, just so in the US. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go further um, to learn more in my profession uh, to Holland. And um, there was uh, about a, a year and um, in Holland, in this one year, it was very great. I do a lot of good things. I uh, deliver and I learned uh, Dutch language and I learned how do you propagate. Uh, in, it was an alpine uh, nursery. Uh, they, we produced, with five people, we produced only alpine and cushion plants. It was very interesting and my a chief has a um, uh, great contact all over the world, to England and to, uh, to other nurseries. And uh, in Holland, it's very important to, to have each square meter is very expensive. Mm -hmm. And you ha don't have any more space. It was a little nursery. And uh, so they have cut um, uh, perennials for cutting. Uh, under these production of uh, the, yes, three times, the, the glass house three times per year is uh, under production and changed a lot. And then I learned in Holland one thing, you cannot learn it today because nobody um, do this in, in this time. Uh, uh, in, in Netherlands, you call it deep spitting. Deep spitting is what two, two times under, and the fresh ground above, and the, the, the waste and the weeds downward. And this is a own um, a technique. Uh, it's very difficult to learn this. And in former times, all uh, before, before uh, the Second World War, uh, it was very useful and a lot of um, human beings have to, to do this on the open field, on the uh, um, tulip and, and hyacinth fields. Mm. They do this because the diseases and pests are, uh, yeah, they don't have any chemicals uh, before, before the Second World War. And then I went uh, to, to finish my profession uh, in the University of uh, Stuttgart and I made uh, there the garden technicians. Uh, and um, this is in uh, close by Stuttgart in Baden-Württemberg. And uh, yes, and after this, I want to travel. It's my <laughs> main hobby. <laughs> and I go for five months to India. And I began in Nepal, and I travel with the rucksack over India to Sri Lanka. And it was a very great experience, and I uh, botanized in the Himalaya, and the, in Kashmir, and in Ladakh, in very high altitude. It was amazing to see your perennials, and that is, uh, it is great to see perennials in native, in, in uh, their own, um, how, how they are growing. and. And then I thought, um, and on several journeys I do this uh, later because uh, it's so important for perennial, perennial gardener to see the perennials, how they grow in native, and then what can you do in the garden? It's a com uh, completely other um, uh, situation. Yes, it was much <laughs> more that you believe that I was there. <laughs> and uh, in India, uh, it was th over 30 years ago, and they mo uh, mowed the lawn um, in this way. <laughs> and then, after this, uh, it was very tropical um, the whole day in Sri Lanka, over 30 degrees, and um, I flew back over Moscow and then to Germany, and then I started my, um, uh, as a perennial gardener, as a head gardener in Austria, in, in Inviertel, in Ort in Inkreis, and there is another 
perennial nursery uh, called Feldweber. And uh, there I started, and uh, my main work was the pro propagation. Yes. Uh, but uh, for me, for a perennial garden, it's very important to travel. I told you. But um, the main country is England for us, it's, and, and France, these two countries. But nowadays, a lot of countries are interesting for the perennial gardener. Uh, but England is uh, one of the greatest um, places is Great Dixter. Great Dixter is, is marvelous. It's uh, uh, old-fashioned uh, borders, mixed borders, and in a modern way to use new perennials, new, new plants together with, with um, strong hedges and uh, this contrast is very great. And my first journey, it was one day before the big storm. It was 1987. It was the big storm. We, um, we leave the ferry boat um, and it was very, it's a big ferry boat. They go, ooh, it was a storm. <laughs> And then we drove, it was raining, raining the whole day, and we um, went to the a lodge, and then uh, after the first night, and the streets are blocked, <laughs> full with old trees. It was horrible. It was really horrible. We, uh, and this was my first journey in England. First day in England, <laughs> yes. So, um, what is, what do the perennial gardener? Uh, I have. Um, we built. We built up um, a trial garden in the eastern part of, of Austria, and it is very in the far east from Austria on the Hungarian border, and where there we have a trial garden, and uh, it's a completely other um, climate. It's a Pannonian climate. The Pannonian climate is very warm, hot in summer, and a dry autumn, and in winter it's very cold and uh, snow covered, uh, less snow covered. It's very hot in, in summer and um, less rainy. And now we tested uh, a few important perennial groups, delphinium, phlox, and so on, and uh, then we, we saw, oh yeah, phlox. I, I was a uh, responsibility, I had a responsibility for, for the uh, trial show, uh, and I have to, to try five times per year to look there. And I saw after three years the fluxes um, are completely damaged. Uh, a few cultivars are okay, but mostly of the, most of them are damaged because the dry and hot wind in, in, the, in the summer are instead. And then I wrote my first article in a, in a, a magazine, in the garden boxes, and then the perennial gardener are uh, calling and shouting, ah, oh, what can you write such stupid things <laughs> that are good perennials, these flocks, cultivars. <laughs> and I, I, I said no. They are not good in this area. And when we sell in Vienna and the eastern part of, um, of Europe, uh, of, of Austria, perennials from northern, uh, northern part of Germany and Holland, then we have to trial them. It's important. Later then, I got the Russian cultivars. And the Russian cultivars are very healthy and more, more uh, usable. And uh, then I organized several uh, botanical tours, um, one of them to Greece, and uh, northern part of Greece, and two of them uh, to in, in the Alps. And this is an, um, on the, uh, the valley of Mount Olympus in Greece. And you see my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> This is Kata, and uh, yeah, I, I have, we, we carry she in the, in the rucksack, and on the top of the mountains, about 3,000 meter uh, altitude, 
And uh, you can see, you know, Mount Olympus is one of the best examples to see a lot of very beautiful plants. Uh, they have uh, only this mountains, 12 um, endemic plants, only on the top of the mountains. And you see several, a lot of uh, other plants from the Pannonian, from the, um, from the Eastern Turkey and from, uh, from other, uh, from all the directions. Yes, and then I thought uh, a few uh, very good friends of mine in, in Holland and in Germany, they began for themselves to, uh, to start a nursery, to grow up, uh, to, to start a nursery. And um, this was one good friend of mine, Ewald Hügen in Freiburg. And uh, he uh, collected a lot of um, unusual perennials. We uh, travel a lot together. He's my best friend um, in, in case of perennial and, and uh, to select a new cultivars and so on. And this nursery is in the middle of Freiburg and round to round are three garden center. And he has a good uh, s selling. And this is Hans Kramer in, in, in Holland, uh, the Hessenhof. Is, uh, I think uh, you know him. Hans Kramer is very popular. And um, he has a, a nursery about um, as, as we with, with a great assortment. And then I thought I have to begin. Uh, I, I, it's not, not good to, to, to wait longer. We built a, uh, we, we bought a house and then behind the house I have a start for my own with alpines and uh, I bought a big collection of uh, Saxifraga with uh, uh, about 300 cultivars that was the first mistake <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, this 300 cultivars, they are very beautiful, it's great, they are flowering in February, February, March, <laughs> nobody can, comes into the nursery. <laughs> 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 and, and so I, uh, after about uh, seven or eight years, a friend of mine has said, Do you, uh, you're stupid, why, why don't wait longer, <laughs> away with this. <laughs> and then I sold this collection to a good friend in Germany. Uh, <laughs> so, and then I began for myself to start a nursery on a, on a very good, uh, on the old open field. There was nothing. I began with nothing. Mm -hmm. Only a meadow. And uh, there is the, the highway. Yeah with a lot of noise. So as a Rolsen arboretum here, we have also noise from the, from the highway. And uh, yes, and I thought, is that right that I could start in this way? No? And then I um, make it in the old fashioned way. Uh, it was 22 years ago. There was not, um, you cannot, uh, in, in, in this time, you couldn't buy uh, young plants in, 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 in the several um, uh, young plant, uh, special nurseries. It was impossible. You have to do it in an old-fashioned way to propagate from each uh, stock plant and, and so on. And then I thought I have to build up a nursery, not the German way, whereas uh, on alu tables with uh, um, pictures and from A to Z all in style uh, beds that was not my way. I am inspired from, from England and from France and they are very, uh, they are creative. Yes, and then um, I uh, traveled to my first garden feast. Uh, the garden festival in Bingerton in uh, Holland. And I go there, uh, it's not far away from Arnhem, and I have my first um, garden feast, and it was very great, uh, great experience. 
and later I drove to several uh, garden um, days in Hamburg, in, in southern part of Germany and so on, uh, to make me uh, more popular. <laughs> the, the people um, they don't know what, what is Sarastro. And then I, in, in Holland, I um, carry um, about 10 or 15 these old, uh, what's the name of this? Um, tiles. Uh, yeah? Roof tiles. Yes. And uh, I planted with Semper Vigo. And in Holland, they, I sold it very good. And the people, uh, after one and a half days, they were, they were away. And then, two years later, I made it in the same way in Austria. And the people are buying all other things, all perennials, what they, what they have. And they saw these things. Oh, what a good idea. Wow. But this can I do self. Okay. And uh, one of the main uh, things what I have done in the first years are uh, the uh, to plant the um, uh, the what is in the English yeah. island of uh, strips, the traffic traffic hell strips and roundabouts the roundabouts yes and uh, that was the main thing and I I know what what kind of perennials are growing and it's a lot of good um, they are uh, against uh, the emissions and all the uh, snow and salt and all mm -hmm. and I know which perennials are useful for this and it's completely in Austria was a completely new way to use perennials and that's mm -hmm. very good uh, to show the people uh, that was a nice uh, and, and, and uh, otherwise they they mow the, the um, that stupid ten times a year mm -hmm. in the traffic to mow <coughs> <laughs> but now uh, the, uh, the, um, the workers are not, uh, they are lazy, they, are, um, <laughs> they don't uh, do anything on this, uh, they, they want to mow, okay. Uh, so, and then I selected uh, Helebos, and uh, this is my uh, private garden, and I selected Helebos, uh, I drove to England and to um, to Helen Ballard and to, to other people in, in Netherlands uh, to collect uh, very good types of Helebos and uh, then we propagate them from, from seed. It's very beautiful. And uh, I saw that in America it's very even too. Uh, they yes, these are the Saxifraga mm -hmm. collection. Uh, and uh, yes, it was very good and exciting, but uh, I cannot sell them. So that's what one speciality. I don't know whether you uh, know this. It's an endemic plant of the northern part, northeastern part of the Alps and Austria. It's Calianthemum, Calianthemum anemonoides. It's very difficult, and it takes a long time to to um, grow them up um, for for. Um, you, first you need stock plants and um, it takes about 10 years this plant in this size 10 years and it's a not a, not, not a Astra seer it's a ranuncula seer ranuncula seer yes and it's an endemic plant and it's very very uh, rare uh, but when you collect the seed you have fresh seed and sow them the seed and then Germinate. And this is another uh, very good plant, uh, Anebia pulchra. It's Anebia pulchra, the prophet, uh, prophet flower. And uh, it's also very difficult to propagate. And then, um, mainly the first years, I we, we propagate um, uh, when. Uh, so stupid things as geranium <laughs> to earn money. <laughs> and, but uh, 20 years ago, there are uh, geraniums 
They were very popular. Mm -hmm. And um, I have uh, five long beds with geraniums in uh, 150 cultivars, different cultivars. And we sold them very good for landscapers. First, we have, when you started your own nursery, I, uh, in my opinion, I, I uh, had um, to, to look um, that we so, uh, sell for landscapers and then um, to build up the bigger assortment. Geranium psilostimum, psilostimum, uh, very great flowers, big, big flowers, and uh, it's a king of the geraniums. And geranium feum, very early flowering, very early in, in uh, I have about 15 different cultivars, black and white and mauve and uh, pink, pinkish, and uh, they are flowering in late April to June. No geranium is flowering so long as geranium fail, the brownish uh, crenisbeer. And then uh, I got uh, some snowdrops from mm. an old um, um, uh, uh, plantsman in Germany, and <coughs> he, he gave me about five or six cultivars from uh, snowdrops. <laughs> from, he got it from England. Uh, I thought uh, snowdrops is white, 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 white. <laughs> <laughs> and I planted it into my garden, and you know, I will see. And then uh, I was. Uh, for the first time in the late 19, 19th, I was in England to look on my first Galante Scala. The Galante Scala, there were about uh, in a big, uh, in an old church, it was uh, three uh, uh, short talkings, about uh, three or four, 300 people from 15 nations. Yeah. And they are. <sighs> looking uh, white, so beautiful snowdrops. <laughs> and then was a, a big door. After these uh, um, talks, they opened the door, and the 300 people are going down. <laughs> and outside and outside, there were five nurserymen who sold the Galantus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable and very expensive. This is, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. and so after years, I started with Galant. Uh, over the years, I propagate and propagate and propagate. It takes a long time. Uh, you only when you uh, plant one corn, it takes about. Uh, there are several cultivars, yellow or or double flowered forms. They take a long time to, to and you have to divide and plant it in the green, only in the green after flowering, and you have to feed it. A lot of feed. Galantus need a lot of feed. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable. <laughs> and then they are growing. And after three years, you can divide them and plant new. And uh, there are several problems with, um, um, uh, what's the name? The Botrytis galante, Botrytis galante, it's a, um, a fungus and it, it destroyed the whole galantus. When you not be careful, after there's a loaf, um, uh, loaf um, or loaf, uh, leaves on, on, on the ground, mm -hmm. and, and in spring it's wet and uh, the sun. Isn't shining and, and then you get the uh, the galantis, uh, botrytis and they destroy they destroy the whole galantis uh, clump. So and then uh, after about ten years, uh, ten years, my own nursery. We have uh, three employees and then uh, I start to to travel again and uh, we go uh, to, we flew to New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand has a very, uh, it's an amazing and very special uh, flowers. And this is, uh, you can see here the Mount Cook on the right side, 
and this is uh, one lake, Kata you remember well, and uh, uh, we went up in the morning six o'clock and go to the this lakeside and there are six or seven buses and uh, click 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 <laughs> click click right? and I thought we may in Austria we have a lot of such uh, uh, <laughs> lakes and, and mountains, beautiful, but nobody takes uh, so a lot of photos. <laughs> we make something wrong. <laughs> yes. And, yeah, this was great. This uh, um, the big uh, glacier from uh, Franz, Franz Josef Glacier. And it was unbelievable. Uh, about 20 years ago, it was uh, on the, in the ocean, and now it's shorter and shorter and shorter. Yeah. And this is Kata <laughs> with her mom, and uh, yes, uh, about three or four months later, he pa she passed away sadly. Uh, she had cancer, and uh, the, the whole journey was not easy for me because it's very bad, and uh, yeah. And so, then back, I built up in the nursery um, these walls. I start with the first floor, and then uh, one after the other. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is uh, so-called this wall. I, I was in England again, and I saw one wall, mm -hmm. and I thought, why? so straight and uh, it's, it's boring. I thought you have to do it in your own way. And this I want to say to you, not only with, with uh, you have to, to, to play with your plants and you find your own way. And it's even with old frames and old, uh, 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 so, Oh, uh, this is important to, to, to build it in your way, not, not what the neighbor is doing. <laughs> yes, it's years later, and I, I plant with drifts along these walls, and with a lot of grasses, um, the Shamsia Gold Tau, it's one of the best, it's not self-sowing. And uh, um, yes, uh, 10 years ago, we sold a lot of miscanthus. Uh, Miscanthus now is not so good article, uh, and more panicum and bolinia and other grasses. Yes. Now this is a nursery from above, and uh, you can see it's uh, for me it was very important to, to build up a nursery. Uh, for only for private selling, for private people, for retail, and um, uh, many displays, many show garden, uh, such and others. Yeah. And uh, um, we not um, have a lot of each. Um, we now nowadays we have about three thousand different species. Hmm. Uh, cult cultivars, uh, in, and we do uh, about one, 160,000 per year, and we have now six employees, that's now. And we make only retail, nothing more. Yes, uh, the ferns, and uh, <coughs> a great art, good article in, in Austria and in, I, I'm, in, I'm close to the border of Bavaria, to Germany, and uh, about um, um, from, from 100 um, uh, people are 50 from Bavaria, and uh, they, I can sell very good um, De La Sperma. De La Sperma is very, one of the best articles. And anemone, one um, main point and, uh, is anemone nemorosa. Uh, there I collected over the years about 150 different forms, anemone nemorosa. I think that's the biggest collection in, in Europe. 
Yes. And this is the most popular uh, perennial in our country. This is Knautia macedonica. Knautia macedonica. It's very easy to grow, it's self sowing, and um, yes, you have it over years. It's one of my uh, favorite um, delphinium. And uh, it's important for you to know um, um, there are the two different forms of delphinium. Uh, one of these is the, um, new, uh, comes from New Zealand uh, or the Pat Pacific hybrids. They are not very um, durable. And um, these forms are from Carl Förster. And Carl Förster is one of the most uh, important persons. It's my guru. <laughs> yes. And um, Carl Förster, um, he was 97 years old. He wrote 30 books and he was a garden poet. And um, he selected about 350 uh, perennials and one of them uh, were the Delphinium and Fluxus. And um, the Delphinium Morgenthau, this was, is one of the best for him. And very stable, without mildew and nothing. With, yeah. Or uh, one of the best old perennials uh, select, perennial selection came from Switzerland and this is Asta Fricati Wunder von Stefa. <laughs> Wunder von Stefa. Uh, I think that's a, a horrible name to, to <laughs> <laughs> for you. <laughs> Wunder von Stefa. Uh, but it flowers from July to October. Mm -hmm. Over years. It takes about two years, and then you have a stable situation over many years. It's flowering and flowering and flowering. Mm -hmm. Wunder von Stefan. But uh, I think it is important uh, to, to use perennials, um, short living perennials, and yeah, uh, some of my uh, friends are calling them wheat. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, 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 Karde in Germany. A German language, Dipsacus uh, is a, a Vienna plant. And this between, uh, between uh, delphiniums or um, Asta or others, it's very beautiful. <laughs> Short living plants. It's a a picture from my, uh, a part of my show garden. And this is the Hasta garden. And uh, uh, this is very important for you to know. Um, in the spring, are here under the Hasta are a lot of Galantus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> big uh, clumps of Galantus. And uh, after three or three, four years, I divide them and plant in a fresh ground. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. and this is the same situation, yes, in, in the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's uh, the, the labels, and I write in uh, with with um, uh, Sharpie. Uh, Sharpie. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is in the late autumn. <coughs> and this is my own, this is Campanula Sarastro. And I found it in my parents' garden. And uh, sometimes I saw a plant with a big, uh, huge, huge flowers. <laughs> and I thought, what's this? And only in the, in the garden are two Campanulas. One of them I uh, um, got from Japan, uh, it was Campanula punctata honduense, and the other was Campanula trachelium. It's a bad weed, <laughs> self sowing. And the Campanula punctata is um, uh, it's a growing habit, it's a weed, it's very uh, it's dangerous. And this was, might be a hybrid between these two um, forms. Okay, I dig it out and uh, uh, took it to, to Austria and uh, make stock plants and, uh, and propagate over two or three years. And then I saw no seed, 
no running habit, mm. very good plant. Mm. So, and uh, uh, in Chicago, about uh, 10 years ago, it was the best campanula uh, of the world. They uh, thought, yes. Because when you cut them uh, half after the first uh, flowers, you cut them half, then in started to uh, with the second flower, and then in over the, the August, you cut it down, and then you have to feed them, and then flowers in the autumn again, but not such. Uh, uh, the main flower, and this is Angelina, uh, the Sedum Angelina, the director has told about this. Yes, in, I found it in Croatia in a little garden, and it was a sport from Sedum Reflexum. And I asked uh, whether I can um, take them to Austria, these uh, yellow uh, branches, and then I propagate it. And so it's, um, uh, you can find it all over the world in the English, uh, especially in the English uh, uh, speak countries. Anglican. Yes. No? Oh, yeah. And uh, to select your own own cultivars, uh, this is uh, make joy, a lot of um, fun, and, and uh, uh, to see which cultivar is good. And uh, one of this I selected uh, five about five years ago. It was um, Nepeta Poseidon. We called after your uh, of uh, after our black cat Poseidon. <laughs> and uh, yes. And uh, it's also sterile, it produces no seed, and this is very good. Or uh, Solidago, it's a Solidago, you know, this is wheat all over the, uh, in Europe as well. And um, in Berlin, <coughs> in the garden, I saw this Solidago, so golden leaves. And in spring, you see in March, April, when the leaves are coming out the ground, you see these golden leaves are over uh, 100 meter. Mm -hmm. And I ask whether I get some some uh, 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 little piece of them, and I propagate it. And I called it Hitigai Gai. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, crazy name, Hitigai Gai. It was. A big black cat too, with yellow <laughs> eyes. <laughs> with yellow eye, eyes, uh, yeah, in, in the dark. Uh, that's okay. okay. And I like it to 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 make um, little displays um, the, with annuals and grasses and uh, uh, yes, and, and several perennials. <coughs> and now um, it's not long. Uh, about four years, for us it's very important to, to sell perennials for bees and insects. Mm -hmm. Become more and more important. And then one, one, one a day I try to create a new garden style with uh, vegetables and, and perennial. And put them together. Yeah. <coughs> so, this is in autumn, Miscanthus. I have a known selection, Miscanthus is Aldebaran with uh, white, uh, white um, plumage. And then later, it was uh, about six years or five years ago, I have no space. Uh, my nursery is about uh, one, uh, two acres, not very big, but there was one uh, field in front of uh, the nursery, and uh, there I started to to um, to do a flux museum, a flux museum, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, yeah, so I prepare with, with a good soil. It's very important. Flux need uh, the best soil you can. Uh, you don't believe it, but you cannot feed a flux enough. <laughs> and then I start with my flux museum together with grasses, flocks and grasses together. 
and I collected about uh, 500 different cultivars from flocks. And I, I hate floxes. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, I was one, one time there come Russian people in my, my nursery, and then I traveled five times to Russia about floxes. And they had so great floxes, I, then I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I saw this. This is the Flox Museum later. And I collect not only floxes, I collect these... Uh, yes. Garden tools. So, and then what we do, uh, every year uh, a lot of buses are come. And I, that's very important for us because they not only uh, buy plants, they told, uh, yes, uh, it's beautiful or not in the Zarastro nursery. They told over the country. And so more and more people are coming. And here I uh, built up a new situation and told them uh, it was one bus. Uh, for a few hours, how they they can do and build up a new perennial board or a, um, a new gravel garden. This is a new gravel garden. Yes. yes. And now we have uh, this uh, after uh, about three years, and uh, I put frames into the is uh, different displays and situations and explain with a white marker. Yeah? And we have now, the first year, this year was very horrible for us because it was so dry. It was so dry you cannot believe it. It was, it was horrible. We have enough water, that's not the problem. But um, uh, the books, uh, books soon slow. It was a bat, um, it's um, a butterfly, a little butterfly, and the caterpillar are eating the, the boxes. And you have to be careful. That's another display, another bed. Um, this is my way to use perennials with um, 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 wild perennials and with annuals and uh, even a uh, peonia or, uh, uh, by example, delphinium or other um, uh, perennials between them. This is one of the most um, uh, exciting perennials. Uh, it is Arconogonon <coughs> Johanniswolke. Arconogonon uh, polymorphum is the exact name. Uh, I have uh, several forms from uh, Akonogonon. It's a big, um, uh, what's the name in, in English? Um, I don't know exactly. Yes, uh, it flowers over about uh, three months, uh, but it stinks. It's not <laughs> good. Uh, after a peak, uh, <laughs> but it flowers enormously. <coughs> Hemorocallis, you have enough from this perennial in the US. <laughs> and uh, and in this, at this time, we only sell very good red forms, red flower, uh, not, not yellow. And this is my main uh, hobby, um, the, to the alpine plants. Uh, but in the nursery, only it's only um, about. Um, well, it's not so important, but it's my my hobby. Yes, um, you can put the sample vivo into the pictures, and uh, it's an evening situation. And we sell uh, our perennials in these countries, um, the main, mainly in to Germany, about seventy percent. The other, in the other countries around, around Austria. I live about here. Mm -hmm. There, yes. There's Vienna. 
Salzburg and yeah, on the uh, German border, <coughs> not far away from the Czech Republic. And the Czech Republic there, they have the most, uh, the best um, uh, alpine garden in the world. And we do mail orders, and uh, about 60%, 60% uh, we do mail order. And um, yes, uh, it's um, our uh, main uh, thing, yes. It's all for order after order. And I don't know whether you know this uh, in the middle. This is um, uh, Noel Kingsbury mm -hmm. from England and uh, a friend of mine from Vienna. And uh, then when in the winter time, when we have less to do, I write books or uh, write article for, for magazine. And, uh, one book it was very excited uh, to write it uh, was Black Box Gardening together with Jonas Reif, um, um, chief um, uh, editor. Chief editor. <coughs> yes, from from uh, Garden Properties. Yes, this was uh, my first situation in Russia in in uh, Saint Petersburg. It was a marvelous. Uh, a great uh, seal like this, full of floxes, about 300 floxes <laughs> in different ways. <coughs> yes, um, big museum, uh, the um, uh, Eremitage, yes, and this is a big glass house in mm. St. Petersburg, botanical garden. And uh, these are my important uh, two ladies, uh, uh, very good friends of mine. This is uh, Svetlana and this is Elena. Uh, this is the uh, most important flocks uh, uh, breeder in Russia. He has selected over 250 different uh, cultivars and amazing what she has done. And this is in Moscow. Uh, another exhibition uh, from Bloxes. And it's uh, amazing what they, these people, have done over the years. Uh, they had a great tradition over 80 years with Bloxes, flox breeding. <coughs> this is in the south. And this was our group. In, we traveled a few days together uh, to the flox breeder around, uh, in, around St. Petersburg. And a few pictures for not not uh, not very very much. Um, this is uh, one of the um, important flox breeder, uh, su uh, successful flox breeder. This is um, uh, Olga Kudryavtseva, and he, with his world famous flox uh, Ach Angel, this big branch is very big uh, white flowers. It's unbelievable. And this was in the uh, northern part of Moscow, about uh, 200 kilometers from the northern part, uh, northern way. And um, <coughs> the, these are the selection fields from Elena Konstantinova. And he, she has, she's landscape, she is doing landscaping. And uh, she has a, a selection fields about two acres, only flocks. Two acres. <laughs> Unbelievable. And uh, after uh, three years, um, about five or less, five percent or less, mm -hmm. and the rest is uh, for the compost. <laughs> yes, I do traveling a lot uh, when I have time, and uh, time is less, yes, uh, okay. And uh, this was uh, five years ago into the Iran, in, on the Tamaman, Tamamant, this is the highest peak in Iran, uh, a big Vulcan, and you can find there a lot of interesting and beauties and uh, irises and all these, uh, and Papava Orientale and other things. Yes, or um, Eremurus. Yes. I don't know whether you know this man in the middle. 
He was in the US, uh, he's very uh, popular in, in Europe. It is uh, Christian Schmidt. Uh, he works at um, Kurt Blume in, in Maryland. And there we uh, saw together um, Iris uh, Likot. This is a very big one. It's a very special iris. Um, and it's complicated and difficult to grow and to <laughs> propagate them because they uh, want a very dry condition and uh, only in limestone and hot over the summer and oh. it's very, very, <laughs> uh, but I think it's marvelous, uh, such uh, uh, beautiful flowers. And um, then I saw um, in the uh, uh, rocks uh, this, uh, I don't know, you know this plant? <laughs> this is Gypsophila. Uh, that's, um, what's the name, Schleier called? Gypsophila. Gypsophila? Oh. Yes, um, a plumish plant. Baby's breath. Baby's breath. Yeah. And uh, it's unbelievable. I think it's a 100 year old discussion. Yes. It's a, you can take a hammer and uh, mm -hmm. it's very, uh, it's uh, like a stone. And white, little white flowers. And uh, last year we traveled together, Peter and I traveled together to Kyrgyzstan. It is another marvelous country. Uh, you have to go there. <laughs> it's very important because there are in a little, I think it's country, Kyrgyzstan is as big as um, North Carolina, I think so. And, uh, but mountainous and um, about 90% are mountain. Mm -hmm. That's uh, it's, uh, very bad roads. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's difficult to drive there. But it's amazing what you can find there, plants. It's amazing. Uh, it's a little country here. They had uh, so much beautiful uh, uh, perennials. They grow. Um, very good in, in Europe, under the same conditions. This is the country. <laughs> very lovely country, and very kind people. And, uh, it's, it was very exciting. Parties. <laughs> 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 that can happen. That's uh, my, uh, this. That's an uh, old tradition, the eagle. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's unbelievable the valleys uh, you can think uh, you are in Canada or in the Rockies or something like that Ephedra so one, uh, from one plant it's very uh, popular in Europe because the berries are uh, we can use it for for, um, uh, for the health yeah. And uh, the oldest, um, Trollius linatinus. Trollius, it's a, a troll, Trollius, uh, a lilac form from uh, Trollblume. And this is Allium, very interesting, very interesting, a black Allium, yes. Allium atrocerulium. Then back in, back in Europe, uh, in the nursery, I make our work further, and uh, we I explain the people how they can do and use perennials in the garden, and uh, then uh, one bus is coming, and I circle around and I show them the displays and the plants, and uh, talk about uh, one hour, and then they could. Uh, they, they can sell, uh, they buy, buy, buy plants, sorry. And then it's... <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. And sometimes in the bus, <laughs> even in the bus. <laughs> yes. yes, and uh, we propagate, uh, about, we have about 3,000 different plants. Not as much as Tony. Tony is amazing <laughs> <laughs> collection, but uh, uh, the 
but we propagate it every year, some of them every second year. Uh, and uh, about 85% we propagate for <coughs> our own. It's a great uh, work, yes. This is our tr traditional trousers. <laughs> we have this over the summer. So, cuttings, very important to make uh, yeah, on the plastic tunnel. <coughs> And it's very important to show children the work. For all of us, it's very important to, to, to uh, it's, I think it's the most important thing. Uh, you have uh, said it in Poland, uh, I it great. It's uh, for young people uh, to take them with you and show them plants and gardens and uh, to show that gardener is a big and uh, one of the most pro uh, beautiful professions in the world. I divide Peonia and we have we don't have a potting machine because our nursery is not so big but we have to keep it very clean every day we have to go out and we have to weed the nursery. Adonis, Adonis Fukuyukai. This is Ado not, not Adonis Amorensis. This is Adonis Fukuyukai. This is an old cultivar from Japan. Japan and uh, it produced no seed. There are two and Adonis amurensis is uh, very rare in cultivation. And snowdrop with uh, winter aconite. And this is a very rare plant. When you got anywhere, you must buy this plant. This is anemone lessery. Anemone lessery is a Russian anemone. And I told you. I have a big collection of Anemone nemorosa, even Anemone ranunculoides. And uh, uh, I got from, uh, from Estonia several cultivars, uh, about 40 different cultivars with double flowers and single flowers and all. And I, we selected them and, uh, and to see which is the best one. This one. Golden Dream, snake. Golden Dream, Anunculus. Uh, Anemone ranunculoides golden tree. And Telosperma, I told you. Telosperma. And Fluxus. Okay? <laughs> Fluxus as well. Masunochi, the Russian form. And grasses, yes. Uh, they became more and more important for us. Um, about uh, six, seven years ago in Austria, nobody. Uh, want to buy any grass, it's wheat. <laughs> and when, when I look here in this marvelous country, overall uh, grasses, it's good. And uh, so, more and more. And this was a um, uh, planting um, uh, in front of our kindergarten uh, with, with miscanthus and panicum and uh, other grasses together with geraniums, cranospil and uh, about 20 years it was okay. Last year they uh, take uh, um, what's uh, Yes, and pick them out. Um, I have for a long time this grass. Uh, this is um, Tumophyllum fraseri or Carex fraseri. It needs uh, uh, acid soil. It's very uh, free flowering in our country, but you have to keep it cool and uh, cool and moisture moisture climate. So it was on the open day one one times a year. I make the weekend uh, open with together with other people. Uh, with other nurseries and a lot of people are coming into the nursery all over the year but, but uh, there especially. Yes, and uh, this is one kindergarten in uh, 
closed and uh, not far away from our nursery and I planted with together with the children uh, um, a perennial ball. And then when I have when I have little time I go to make uh, with landscapers. Um, uh, it was in the in Kiev, in the Ukraine, in the Ukraine, in Kiev, in the main, uh, in the capital, together with landscapers. It was very great. There were, was was two days. Uh, ah. So, and then I wrote a book uh, two years ago, and it was uh, my last book, Meine Welt der Stauden. And this was, uh, I think that's not the last picture. And this is winter time, but winter is very rare in the last few years. And we have a mild, normally in the la last three years, um, in December, January, February, are mild, very too mild. And then in March, tuck, <laughs> the frost is coming without snow. This is a rare situation in our country. This is very bad for us. So I have to cover all with the fleece. Uh, in former times, we never do that. And then the spring is um, yeah, it's a new spring. It's coming with galanthus in end of February. And uh, we propagate uh, about 50 cultivars, different cultivars from the galanthus, and together with helebos and winter aconite, and the people are coming very early in the nursery. So that is a view outside from the greenhouse into the garden, and I am at the at the end. And yes, and thank you. For Uh, there was that on a list. We got a question back here. Do you have a favorite Galantis cultivar? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, indeed. Um, it is Spindleton Surprise. Spindleton Surprise is in yellow with yellow um, uh, um, seed uh, above the, the head. Isn't it green? It's yellow, and it's very good growing and uh, big flowers. And uh, another form is walrus. Walrus. It's a very crazy galanthus. Uh, when you see the flowers, and this is important, <laughs> um, to make difference between this, a lot of cultivars of galanthus, you have to look <coughs> under the shirt. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, some, some of the uh, some of uh, uh, the collector, uh, the plant man, they have a mirror on the stick, <laughs> and so they're going through the uh, forest. In the forest, they're collecting galanthus, new galanthus, and you see the old. I, I, I did it several times, and. Uh, uh, after one day, you're crazy. Oh, only see white. <laughs> yes. But it's uh, forbidden to dig out galantes in, in our country because uh, they are uh, yes, but they are millions along uh, along the Danube River. It's uh, amazing, uh, millions, billions. Uh, I think you have to try it with with uh, uh, first account yours. I, found I think so, but um, I don't know. I, don't but, think uh, so. I think it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> when when then only with the first hybrids, not not with the other. Uh, it's too hard to summer, you see. 
Just come to us. That's right. We're going to have to put this on our, our, one of our next uh, tours. Is, uh, to come out and visit. Yes. I don't know if we can load, 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 load a bus up You're and bring welcome. it back here. Yes. 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 In my last week? Yes. Uh, six. I, to I, I yeah, thought I told you. Yeah. Six, yes, yeah, six. Very <laughs> early. <laughs> Did I hear you right that you, you propagate 85% of what you sell? Yes, yes. <coughs> what, what do you buy in? No. What, Not what, um, I buy only um, cuttings, euphorbia. By, uh, by example, or um, I, I have no space for stock plants. And so I have my stock plants in uh, 200 kilometers away in Nuremberg. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow. there's a friend of mine. He, is, uh, he make only stock plants on the open field for uh, about mm -hmm. 10 acres mm -hmm. and only stock plants. And then I, they planted for me and I bought them back. Yes. So, yeah. is your nearest the nearest town to you and the, the fields? Is that like, what is the population around you? Uh, we call uh, what is it? it's about thousand. Uh, about thousand inhabitants. Just a thousand. thousand. Yes, a very yes. Because yeah. yeah. we're all one, we're all just astounded. You only have six employees. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what is your pool yeah. of you know of people to? to so, uh, so as in England, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. nursery very yeah. 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 All right. Thank you very, very much.